Absolutely. So um, Fiona and I are just going to talk you through the scheme um, uh, and we'll spend about 10 minutes on that and then um, we'll um, have space for you to ask us some questions. So if I can have the next couple of slides, Maddie. So for those of you new to this institute, um, this is a research institute funded by the Health Foundation and led by Mary Dixon Woods. Um, and we're around four years into a kind of 10 year um, uh, award where we are aiming to build the evidence base for improving quality and safety of healthcare. Um, and we're doing that partly through work at the Institute. So there's around 50 research and other staff um, working on projects which are by nature interdisciplinary and very kind of problem focused. So working on um, topics like managing obstetric emergencies during COVID. And in fact, we had a suite of um, research activity in response to the pandemic around um, remote care and other aspects of, of big service changes that were happening, but also looking at important aspects of everyday care like the operational failures and interruptions in general practice and what that means. So we have research staff and projects, we have a great communications team, and we have um, facilities like um, the rather exciting Discovery, which is a, a new kind of engagement platform for both um, carrying out research um, and um, uh, engaging stakeholders in quite innovative ways. So um, if I have the next slide, please. A really important part of this institute's work is our fellowship program. It, it takes up around a third of our budget. And it's very much about investing in the leaders of tomorrow for healthcare improvement research. So we offer a range of awards. We're talking today about the um, PhD award, but we also have postdoctoral fellows, both um, open calls and in particular priority areas. So for instance, we've just closed a call on um, for postdoctoral fellows in sustainable healthcare research. And we've also um, in the past funded some senior investigators. So we've had two kind of professorial level awards in areas, um, both in methods of improvement research. Um, one of our senior investigators has been working on step wedge uh, design, different kinds of um, pragmatic trial designs through to um, another senior investigator award on the design, user-led design of prosthetics. We have appointed over 40 fellows to date. And if you give me the next slide, Maddie, um, across quite a, a range of institutions, but we'd like in this current award to spread that even further in terms of our geographical base and the kind of range of organizations and institutions um, hosting the awards. So if I can have the next slide, please. So um, in terms of why, you know, why you should be interested in um, putting an application for, a, for a, a new PhD project with us, well, um, we carried out a survey of our fellows and of supervisors and there was extremely good feedback and what the supervisors said that they valued from existing um, uh, doctoral fellowship awards was um, partly the kind of prestige of um, being associated with this institute and the kind of community of scholars that um, uh, their PhD students could, could join. Um, they liked the process, they found it um, easy um, and, and quite painless compared perhaps to other schemes, um, but importantly, it was an opportunity for people to design their own project, to appoint their own students, perhaps in areas which might be difficult to fund. So we're particularly interested in 
real world problems um, which might be difficult to find a home through other traditional funding uh, bodies and streams. We've, uh, if I, oh sorry, I was just going to say before um, Fiona helpfully talks you through some of the scheme, I mean, they are, I, I've been working at this institute for the last nine months and, you know, the quality of the projects and the individuals, I mean, they're just amazing. Um, and some of the PhD fellows are doing such interesting work and they're um, really uh, enthusiastic um, uh, ambassadors for the scheme, really. So just, just thinking of some of the students that I've spoken to recently so one's doing um, a project on what safety looks like in mental health settings what does preventable harm what what does safety incidents um, what counts as safety incidents in say a community mental health team um, another project is looking at how remote consultations might exacerbate health inequalities um, and another PhD student is using mathematical modelling, using operational research techniques to look at um, the queuing of ambulances outside emergency departments and how using sort of gaming theory and other operational research techniques, how that might help decision makers um, in, in times of pressure. So really great range of projects um, and individuals. And now I think Fiona's just going to tell you a little bit more about what our scheme involves. Lovely, thank you, Tara. So um, our PhD offer is available as for three years as a PhD fellowship, or there's a four year option, which is a master's plus PhD. Uh, PhD fellowships are intended to be held full time, but we will consider applications for part time study where there's other things like maybe childcare commitments or clinical commitments, that sort of thing. Um, the funding is available, um, or the funding amounts are, are on the screen, and um, so they're available for a three year PhD to a maximum of 137500 for a non clinical fellow, um, and a maximum of 221000 for clinical, and for the four years master plus PhD option, the in fact, maximum funding available for non-clinical is 165 um, and 276 for clinical. So the funding can will cover um, salary um, for the or stipend for the PhD fellow, um, fees, research costs, dissemination, publication costs, um, travel, um, conference attendance, um, that sort of thing. It's all detailed in the application form. Um, can I have the next slide, please, Maddie? Thank you. Um, the PhD fellows will benefit from our mentoring programme, which um, links the student with a more experienced researcher, which is helping us to nurture a multidisciplinary, multi-generational network in the field of healthcare improvement research. Um, there is also opportunity to participate in our annual event, This Space, um, and we also run a fellows only event, which provides opportunity for researchers across the different cohorts and different um, seniority levels um, to connect and support each other. Next slide, please. Thank you. OK, so for applications, we use an online application tracker. Um, you may have already logged into it to review the application form. It's a one step application process, so you won't be required to submit anything additional at a later date. Um, the application window closes at midday on Tuesday, the 15th of March. Please remember that your application must be supported by your finance office before it can be submitted to us. So please allow yourself plenty of time for that step to save any last minute panics, which we have had in the past. Um, if you have any problems using the platform or, or your finance contact can't access the application, please get in contact with me at the fellowship's address, which is on um, the screen later, because um, I can help and support and guide them through. Um, and I can also push things through the, the system if it gets stuck. Um, so please don't worry, just please let me know if there's any problems. When it gets to assessment stage, um, we've got a three stage assessment process. Submitted applications will first be checked for eligibility and completeness before they're passed on to our expert panel. Um, the first stage will shortlist the applications for progression to peer review. Um, second stage is the peer review, which lasts about eight weeks, and we try to get two or three peer reviews for each application. 
then the final stage is the panel will reconvene to review the feedback of the peer reviewers and make the awards to the successful universities. Um, we have up to eight fellowships on offer. Um, after each panel meet, um, any applications that don't progress to the next stage, you will receive feedback um, on your application. And if you get to peer review stage, you'll get a copy of the peer review comments as well. For recruitment, we allow awarded universities up to a year to recruit a, recruit a PhD student to the project um, with the aim that all fellows will be um, in post and commenced by September 2023. Um, obviously, it doesn't mean you have to wait to September. If you have a fellow um, that can start quicker than that, you can start at any point during that process. And um, so long as obviously your contracting and budget and everything is all signed off. Um, next slide, please. Um, so yeah, so in terms of what we're looking, what makes a success, successful application, um, I'm going to pass back to Tara and she'll pick that up. Thank you. Great, thanks. Thanks, Fiona. So in terms of what we're looking for, um, you know, we're looking for a department in which we think um, a PhD student for our kind of improvement research will flourish. So um, that might mean, I mean, your department might be um, hosted in, in different kinds of um, schools, you know, from health sciences to public health to management and organisation um, research or whatever. But we're really looking for a commitment and evidence of multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary research um, and a, a focus on health um, and healthcare which includes both the kind of track record in, in research, but also the links with the service, which might be direct links through previous projects with um, clinical um, and service networks and through um, organisations um, uh, like uh, certainly in England, kind of ARCs, AHSNs, but equivalent sort of bridging research NHS type um, networks and um, organisations. We're looking um, for um, a high quality training environment for kind of research development programmes and for a, a mix of generic on you know review methods or whatever um, to perhaps topic specific sort of training support for your PhD students and as Fiona said that might include the kind of taught masters as um, the early part of the award or not. Um, we look, we look as with all our work at this institute for a commitment to patient and public and indeed kind of staff engagement and how that's worked through in, in the project and in your department, how, how you have um, shown that. Um, and 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 a, a sort of knowledge really of what healthcare improvements about. If I can have the next slide, please. And then in terms of the actual um, PhD project that you're putting forward, so there's only you don't have a huge amount of space. It's not like a fully um, worked up grant application in in some ways. It's just over a thousand words, but within that. Um, the reviewing panel and external reviewers will need to get a clear sense of a kind of a, a study design that's appropriate for the questions that you're asking um, and enough um, uh, detail, again, in outline form, but enough detail of the methods and the different perhaps components and how they might fit together. Um, we want to see that your plans for the kind of supervisors, that you have the right fit of, of skills for the topic um, and, and um, also that in that short outline, there's been enough uh, overview of the evidence to demonstrate both that this is a gap in existing knowledge. Um, and, you know, again, we're not expecting a hugely referenced um, project description, but we would normally expect perhaps kind of five to ten references and to give a sense that the project is grounded in existing evidence. I can have the next slide, Maddie. 
And then we also want um, uh, assurances around the kind of processes for recruiting students that um, you have um, established processes for doing this fairly and well, that you um, are able to kind of promote the opportunity through um, an appropriate range of networks and channels. Um, and we do underline here this institute's um, commitment to um, attracting a wide range of students from a wide range of backgrounds with real potential um, to uh, make a difference to improvement science. So, um, and as Fiona says, um, there's enough time for you to do this properly. Um, and um, yeah, we, we look to your processes for both recruiting and supporting the students once they're in place. So if I can have the, the next slide, which I think is our last slide. So the kind of take home messages really from previous rounds and what we've learned from uh, applications that are successful and those um, which haven't quite made the grade. So perhaps the the most common failing um, is in terms of the project itself, that often they seem too ambitious for a PhD project. So it has to be realistic and sort of well bounded as a, a project that could be undertaken by a doctoral student. Um, so that's perhaps one of the most important factors. In terms of the focus of the research, it's important that you can make the case for why it is a, a real issue, why it's an important issue for the NHS. And I think that third point is that quite often we have um, applications which are more a kind of very local based um, sort of service improvement project with not enough around the kind of evaluation and the research and the robustness of the uh, of the research. So our institute is very much around healthcare improvement research um, rather than improvement itself. We want, um, even though, as I said, it's very much an outline of the project, we want where it's appropriate for attention to be given to um, diversity and, and, and equality. So, um, you know, for instance, um, in terms of who you might recruit um, to look at a particular um, uh, problem and how that might be done. So really thinking about some of those equalities issue. Um, it's good to show a track record in your department of interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary working. So think carefully about the kind of publications that you choose to highlight. And lastly, really important to demonstrate that you have um, an environment which is both supportive and exciting and dynamic um, for, for a PhD student to uh, really shine. We've, um, we do, do, and as I said, we're shortly just going to open up for questions and it's great. I've seen a few questions in the chat, um, but do post any further queries to um, that email address and we'll be happy to have some dialogue offline.